Mark, can you tell us a little bit about the early ecological campaigning that you did? Yes. I was uh, 19 in 1971, my second year at university in London, and uh, I, with a number of others, started uh, an eco-action group. We uh, were very aware of the, um, the then impending ecological crisis and we did a number of actions. We, it was at the time when groups like Friends of the Earth were just starting. In fact, I think they started more or less the same year in Britain at any rate uh, that we were active and we joined in with some of their campaigns. Um, we did a lot of fairly sort of um, innovative campaigning for those days. I remember one um, on um, overpackaging, where we had to undress the overpackaged lady and got the public to participate in that, which uh, yes, was quite enjoyable. We did. Um, we tried to um, encourage the university to do paper recycling, which again was pretty unheard of. So we collected some immense amount of paper from offices in the university, but we hadn't really thought it through. And then we had all this paper on our hands, which sat for weeks in the front quad of the college. Uh, although actually, in, in a way, that made the point as well. Uh, people could see the volume that was being wasted. So those are some of the things we did. Yeah. You mentioned the uh, ecological catastrophe that was coming. Could you talk a little bit about the books and films that... Um, made you think that in the early 1970s? Yeah. I think for me um, it was, I must have been a strange kind of teenager because I listened to the Reef Lectures on Radio 4 and it was Frank Fraser Darling who did a series called Wilderness and Plenty which um, talked about um, really the kind of unintended consequences of um, technology. Uh, I remember him talking about the Aswan High Dam for example and its impact on fisheries in the, in the Mediterranean. It's uh, um, the the um, impact on the delta of the Nile and so on, um, the um, Bilharzia in the upper reach of the Nile that, that uh, uh, increased and so on. Um, and his lectures really um, were, were a real eye-opener and I think that's what energised me personally. But other stuff that was around were things like Paul Ehrlich, the population bomb. And there was, a, I think, a very healthy debate between Ehrlich, who um, stressed population, and uh, Barry Commoner, uh, in particular, who stressed um, the consequences of economic growth um, and um, the failure to control technology. And actually, I um, was suggesting the use of ecological design principles uh, for, um, for modern industry, uh, really far-reaching and very, very far-sighted in those days. And then a couple of years later, I think 72, the Limits to Growth appeared um, by the, um, the Meadows team, and, uh, funded by the Club of Rome. And that made predictions, uh, well they weren't really predictions, but they, they were scenarios, it was modelling. And interestingly enough, their business as usual scenario was reviewed 30 years later in, um, well I think it was... Um, 30 years later, yeah, 2002, and they were pretty much on target, they were right, despite people saying that their models were oversimplified and so on. Um, and, you know, effectively we wasted 40 years uh, since then. So, final question in, in this part of the interview. What do you say to people who say that, well, doom has been predicted in the early 1970s and it didn't come therefore all predictions of doom are wrong yeah well remember the uh, limits to growth team predicting societal breakdown in the middle of the 21st century um, and who knows we're looking at peak oil um, impending probably within the next five to ten years by, by the uh, best data that, that, that I think is around um, we know the recent um, information on the, um, uh, the much faster uh, summer melt in the Arctic. Um, we know much more about feedback effects now in, in the eco ecosystem. So I suspect, if anything, you know, they, they could well have been um, uh, too optimistic. Um, Ehrlich, on the other hand, was wrong. Um, Ehrlich was predicting um, starvation, mass starvation, um, by the, I think it was the, the late 70s, and he was clearly wrong. Although, as he said, um, 
he stands by what he said, but basically he says he got the timing wrong. Because 